title issue update. <laughs> Not good. Not good. Let me get you caught up. Yeah, hey everybody, Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. I hope you guys are doing well. I, uh, in my last video, I expressed some issues I was having with the Oregon title getting it transferred, getting this Bigfoot RV transferred into my name, and um, I don't have a resolution yet. I don't have a resolution yet. But before we start, you know, I've had lots of help along the way from you guys leaving comments. Um, I would also say that there's probably 400 comments in my last video, everyone just saying, Eric, just go register it in Arizona. Eric, just go turn into an Arizona resident and get it registered. Um, and so rather than reply to all 400 of those comments, it made me think, why does everybody think that I can just go magically register this vehicle in Arizona and how I could just easily be in Arizona. And that's because what happened is a lot of people think that as soon as you buy land, you automatically turn into a resident. And that's really weird to me that there's so much information about that. Did you know that you can go online right now? You can sit there on the couch with your laptop. You can go buy property online, sight unseen in Florida, New York, Washington, Texas, Arizona. How does that make you a resident legally? You didn't, you didn't have to visit these places to buy property there. That does not make you a resident. Uh, setting up camp does not make you a resident. Um, in Arizona, it happens to be a little di more difficult to become a resident of Arizona than, say, Texas, where I have an actual established government tie with escapees and the city Polk County, which says, you know, you have a designated home here. You actually live here. It's not just a piece of land, and it's not just a P.O. box at escapees either. It's an actual RV living space um, there. So established, so for me, establishing uh, in Arizona, would, would I would have to prove residency. And you have to actually prove that in Arizona, it turns out. Um, some, one of the requirements that I can't get around right now is that you have to have two utilities in your name at your house where you live, okay? Well, that would be really difficult for someone who lives in an RV on property that has no utilities. I'm completely off grid up there. However, I do have a trash service there. Um, I also do sometimes get water delivered there and propane refilled there. So, you know, I thought about, you know, reaching out to these companies and saying, hey, even though I don't have a mailbox out front, can we temporarily change my billing address to the physical address uh, in, in Arizona? And then just don't mail me any bills, because like I said, there's no... There's no mailbox there and there's no services, but that's how I would, that, that would help me become an Arizona resident if I chose to go down that route. But that's beyond the point at this particular moment because, as you guys know, Texas won't validate my title. They won't give me registration. They also won't even give me temporary trip permit to get back to Arizona. And that was just really, oh, I was starting to go down a path that was really ugly thinking that this channel is going to make a huge change. Luckily for me, luckily for you, I did not make any rash decisions. I have some really good friends out there who helped keep my mind on a level playing field and try to be more solution-based and how do we get through this and stuff like that. Also, going back to Arizona, I had a couple friends pretty much guarantee me that I was going to be able to take this registration and get it easily registered in Arizona because magically all my problems will disappear if I just turn into an Arizona resident and go register the vehicle there. Well, that did not work out. I did try and and I, I know, thank you so much to Camper Van Kevin. He made a special trip uh, down to the Desert Title Sholo office there. He had all of my documents. I emailed front and back of every single document. We sat down on a three-way call with the title agent there and uh, she said the same exact thing. She said, absolutely not. I cannot register this vehicle with the title as is. However, if you were here in person with all of this paperwork, I would issue you a temporary trip permit here in Arizona. I thought, well, that's awesome. That'll get me by for a little bit. Huh. That is like the best news that I've gotten yet. Somebody's actually going to let me legally drive this RV. How do I get to Arizona, though? <laughs> that's the tricky part, right? Well, through the magic of teleportation, <laughs> I'm back in Arizona. <laughs> Thank goodness. Let's go back inside.
I'm just happy to be back here. This is where I needed to get to because I also have my LTVA pass on the RV and, and, all, and my Harley and all my stuff was here. And I get to stay here until April 15th if I need to take that long. Or I could take all my paperwork up to the, to the title place on the bike or with a friend and I can go get that temporary trip permit to fix things. Now, I want to explain exactly what's going on because I do think this could be a learning experience if you're buying an RV from another state that you're going to register it in. As as well as exactly what the problem was with this title was and why there's like this weird, you got Oregon saying, we're a dealership, we didn't do anything wrong, don't be mad at us. And then you got Texas, you're trying to avoid taxes. You're illegally registering this vehicle. You don't even own this vehicle. Or you don't even have the right to sell this vehicle to Eric Jacobs. Like that is a serious drastic difference between two states. Why did that happen? Well. My buddy Sean and I, we, we talked it over the phone and we kind of figured it out and then I presented that information back to the dealership and they said, you're right, that is exactly what is going on right now. So, okay, before we go into the title, what's the kind of the one thing different about Oregon? Well, there's a few states, but the one thing different about Oregon between Texas is Texas has state sales tax. Oregon does not have sales tax, meaning if you live in Washington or Idaho, you can travel over into bordering Oregon, you can buy a big screen TV and pay no sales tax. That's, that's like a huge thing, right? However, if you buy a vehicle from Oregon and then you're planning on, on registering in another state, you do still have to pay your state, state income tax. And I knew that was coming. Eventually, when I got this registered, I'm gonna have to pay like 2,500 bucks in state sales tax to Texas alone, fine. We're not even there yet though. But okay, so I buy a vehicle from a dealership, you would think they have the right to sell me that vehicle. And you would be right, because this title is in an open state, in the state of Oregon right now, there's some information on the back that is not right, okay? So under seller, it says, okay trades. Under buyer, it says, world of RVs. That's the place where I bought the RV from. Shouldn't my name be on there? And when I asked them about that, they said, no, this title is in an open state. This is how we do all of our title transfers. And I remember pausing for a slight minute at the dealership and saying, I just, I don't feel like that would work in Texas. I remember thinking that in my mind, but you're buying from a dealership. You got to think they're not going to sell you something that they don't own, right? So anyways, long story short, you guys know I went to Texas and that is exactly what the problem is. The seller should be World of RVs. The buyer should be Eric Jacobs. Now, as far as the ladies at the counter freaking out, thinking that this dealership didn't have the right to sell it to me, well, that's that difference between two states. You see, in the state of Oregon, since there's no sales tax, if somebody, like a dealership, buys a vehicle and doesn't put it in their name, but they keep the title open, and there's, a, there's, there's one buyer in there that's missing, right? And then you hand it over to the next buyer, they go into the Oregon office, there's no problem. Why? Because nobody evaded taxes during that transaction. That title was in an open state anyway. The state wasn't going to gain anything by them applying for a new title. Now, in a perfect world, believe me, it would be great if the dealership had put this title in their name. However, Oregon is also one of those states, ironically, that takes a very, very long time to get your physical title. We're not talking weeks here. We're talking months. And I've heard as far as six or seven months to physically get the title after you apply for it. Now, if a dealership, that turnover rate, that kind of sucks. Even though you're not paying an extra money to get that title, that RV has to just sit on your lot for half a year before you can even list it for sale with your title. That's why it's great having an open title platform in Oregon where you don't have to put it in your name. You can just sell it. And then that was, that was a legal transaction. However, in the state of Texas, that is not correct. And although I have proven ownership with other documents, there's, there's, there's no question that I own this RV that is attached to that VIN number. The state of Texas and the state of Arizona that I know of, probably a lot more, have a big problem with the back of the title, not listing the dealer on the other paperwork who sold it to me and the buyer being Eric Jacobs. That's the problem. So how do we fix this? You guys remember I talked about getting a dealer reassignment form. It's an actual form in Texas. Now that's not a form that's official with DMV in Oregon. And the reason for that is because it was never necessary from the beginning. You wouldn't go in there as a dealer and say, I need a reassignment form. They're gonna look at you and say, the title's open and ready to sell. You just sell the title. You don't need to reassign anything. We don't care. Texas cares. Arizona cares. They won't even register your vehicle without that change. So how am I going to fix this? 
Well, the good part is I'm in Arizona, I'm with friends, I can work on some other projects like the solar system and a few other things while I try to get this sorted. But I do think that there is going to be at least one, possibly two, flame pl f flame plane flights for me, uh, either driving, getting a ride, or riding the motorcycle to the Phoenix airport, then flying out to Portland, I may have to give this title over to somebody there. I don't want to mail it, but I may give it to someone like World of RVs, have them register the RV, have them wait for the title. <laughs> it, it, you know, it'll be later this year, you know, and that's what, that's what worries me. However, again, I have this place till April 15th. I've got my property there. What what we really want to do is try to get some certified documents from Oregon dealership, which is what we were trying to get before I left, uh, that would certify that this serves in lieu of your form of dealer reassignment, and then put those together and submit it. The problem is the Texas office doesn't want to do that right now, and so we have this clash with them. Look, guys, if I have taught you anything with this process, buy a vehicle only within the state that you live and where you're going to register it from. You do not want this hassle. I, even my worst enemy, I do not want you to have to go through this. Especially if your life and your business revolves around traveling. And what do they do? Texas plants me and says I can't travel. <laughs> That's why I got out of there so quick, without even thinking. I mean, I got teleported out of there back to Arizona. So, uh, they did send me some documents from Oregon. The dealership has been very, very helpful. I didn't mention the dealership yet because, you know, just some problems that I've been having, some weird surprises, you know, with the slide thing going on and then this going on, you know, I didn't want them to have a bunch of calls and say, oh, you sold Eric a bad RV or you didn't give Eric a good title. No, there's a story behind all this and I don't, I don't think the dealership did anything maliciously. I think more so it's, it's my fault more than anybody's fault for not buying an RV out of Texas with a Texas to Texas transfer, or I could have made a phone call instantly. I could have called the Livingston Polk office and say, hey, I'm thinking about buying this RV. It's already filled out in the back because it's an open title, but they can't put my name on. Is that going to be a problem? She would have said, absolutely, that's a problem. You need to bring me a title that has you as the buyer. Click. And I would have got back on a, fl a plane and probably flown back to Arizona. But being as we're still in contact and they're still trying to help me, Here's the other weird thing, with, with the storms going on, the ice storm of the century, I guess, there in Texas and everything, the offices are still closed. They might be open by the time you see this, but here midweek, the, the offices are still closed, the mailroom's still closed, the licensing tax office is closed, it's too cold to open the offices, they say. There's no snow or anything, but yeah, very strange. And the first package that they sent that was certified overnight, guaranteed next day, that actually got lost in transit. So, um... Good thing I didn't have a title in there because the USPS lost the guaranteed package. Now, that's not a state of, like, what my bad luck is right now. I don't know what is. That's why I absolutely would never send this out. Even if I paid $50 certified mail, I would rather fly for hundreds of dollars and hand it directly to them. You know, they're going to try to refill out those forms, get them recertified, notarized and stuff like that, and send them out here to me here in Arizona. And once I have those, I need to think about it. Now that I've got friends that can watch my kitties for a day or two, I could fly out to Houston, rent a car, get to Livingston. I could do this all in 24 hours with a plane ride instead of driving across the country for a six-day trip that turned into a week that turned in, you know, so... That's where I'm at right there. Also, I want to say it's not like driving this RV was a complete wasted trip because I still would have had to have physically had this RV there for the inspection. So there's no way to get around the Texas vehicle inspection pass sheet. This has to be submitted at the counter in order to also register your vehicle. So I couldn't have just flown out in the first place with this documentation because they still need to check the VIN and do your vehicle inspection. That's all I'm saying. So, however, looking forward, now that I have that and the RV is parked here in Arizona for the meantime, I can look into remotely dealing with this. No, not remotely. I would physically have to still fly to Livingston with my ID, pay the, pay the money that I owe them to get the plates, and then I could fly back with new plates in my backpack and my registration, put it on it, and then I would be legal for a year. I am still considering the whole Arizona thing. Like, like I said, I, I just I feel like there was a lot of misinformation out there. Everyone's just like... You're an Arizona resident, Eric. You obviously are because you have property. It doesn't work that way, guys. 
<laughs> but thanks for trying. And then even more people, like a thousand people, and, you know, no hard feelings, but some of my best friends said, I guarantee you, you will be able to register that here in Arizona, Eric. That was also not true. Arizona won't register this vehicle either, so... But it is what it is. I'm not giving up, guys. I'm not giving up. It's just, this is an incredible stress on me. And uh, so now I can't do anything today. What are we going to do? I work on the RV. I placed 33 orders on Amazon Prime, all being shipped here to my Moon Mountain address. They are so awesome there at getting my packages, letting me know when my packages are there. My first item of my $7,200 purchase on Amazon is a DC to DC Victron charger. This will replace like your onboard inverter plug that, that, that trickle charges those lead acid batteries that come with an RV. Since we're gonna be upgrading to lithium, we need a lithium version that goes from the alternator to the batteries. So this is the first piece. And as you can see, I'm clearly going with Victron components, $7,200 worth of stuff on the way. I think when it's all said and done, I will probably get this job done for just under 12 grand and that includes I paid the gas to get Wayne from Florida to here and then I'm going to pay him to, to do the job once again. He's really reasonable though and once you see his work if you haven't already and you're here in Quartzsite and want a similar job you might want to talk to RV Prepper Wayne when he gets here because he, he will probably be looking for some other work after he finishes my solar stuff here on the Bigfoot. It's going to be awesome guys. It's going to be really really good and it'll be a great distraction here for me to get my mind off the whole title issue, you know? Opie, are you glad we're back and we're done driving? Are you so glad about that? Yeah, I'm glad too, Opie. Why'd you bite me? <laughs> you want to play, you frisky monster. You're such a monster. You're such a monster. Yes, you are. Thanks for kisses. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, we're parked. Hi, to Tear. Oh, Tear Bear. You happy too? Okay. Okay. Well, certainly uh, it is time. It is time to go uh, play in Quartzsite now that everything is up and running. So in my next video, we'll go uh, have some fun. You guys be well. <sighs> Thankfully, I made it back safe. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.